Unfortunately, because meningitis is rare, many of those who contract it do not realize they're infected, despite the warning signs or symptoms. They think they just have a bad cold or the flu. They kept using the word rare. It is so rare of an illness. The likelihood is so small that your child will get it. And what I kept saying to them is, I'm one out of one. <laughs> That's 100%. In reality, the clock is ticking. We were very close. We always spent time together, go on vacation. Tanya would always be like, okay, I'm gonna sit in the middle in the back seat so you two don't fight. She was always there for everybody. She would take me with all of her older friends. We would all just go hang out. It was nice having a really older sister to be with. She'd had a really rough night because she'd woke up um, just vomiting a lot over and over and up and down since about three o'clock in the morning. Well, it was weird because by 10 o'clock that morning, all of a sudden she, um, she actually felt a little better. I had made her some hot tea and toast and uh, went down and sat on the bed with her in her room and we sat there and laughed and talked. And so, you know, we had her a doctor's appointment, but they couldn't get her in until four o'clock later that day. She had slept a lot and if she stood up at all, she would throw up. She just couldn't keep anything down. It wasn't until five o'clock that she called me in and she had those spots. She had them from her head to her toe, you know, just random, where, all over. So from the time she really had the spots and we knew it was meningitis at five o'clock in the evening, she died at seven o'clock the next morning. It's something that may completely change your life and the way you see things and see other people. It's extremely difficult. In my eyes, she was, you know, we were catching it. We were doing everything right, you know. Early on in the disease, it's very hard to tell. The signs and symptoms of meningococcal disease can be just like the flu. Did you know that not all the symptoms happen at the same time? The symptoms may include high fever, headache, stiff neck, vomiting, confusion, sensitivity to light, extreme weakness, and as the person gets worse, seizures. The onset can be very quick with the fever, sore throat, or headache. It can be deadly. Up to 40% of people who actually contract the disease can die. It happens very quickly and without warning. Meningitis is a medical emergency. It can kill you in a matter of hours. Johnny died on June 12th of 2000 just nine days after he had graduated from Deloro High School. Just his heart and compassion for his family, fellow students, is what really made Johnny stand out. The day that we found out uh, about Johnny being admitted into the hospital, Johnny actually had called 911 himself because of the cramps that he was feeling here at the home. Johnny really wasn't showing any, any signs other than flu-like. As the day progressed there at the hospital, they noted that Johnny's, some of his internal organs were starting to shut down and we were all called outside. At that point, Johnny was dead. They said there was nothing more that they could do for him, but to see that monitor straight line was tough. It has been observed that meningococcal meningitis is such a dangerous disease which progresses so rapidly that it is possible for an otherwise healthy person to be alive at breakfast and dead by dinner. Mary Jo was a very unusual teen. She was vibrant, multi-talented, committed, and a beautiful person inside and outside. She was very kind, considerate, Many of her friends talked about uh, how they'd go to her for advice and when they had problems. 
On a Saturday morning, she came to our room and complained of a sore throat. I got my heavy-duty flashlight, looked at her throat, did not see anything unusual, no redness, no swelling, no blotches. But when I felt her, she felt warm. I had to go to work, so I told her I was just going to call her every four hours, check on her condition, but to call me if she gets worse. I called her at 9 a.m. I asked how she was doing, and she said she felt a little weak. So I told her, just stay inside the house. At 2.30 p.m., the phone rang. When I picked it up, it was Mary Jo, and she said, Mommy, I have brown spots on my face. And I told her, I said, I'm coming home. On my way home, I was thinking, she hasn't been feeling well. Now she has brown spots on her face. I said, oh my goodness, she has meningitis. When I got home, I found Mary Jo sitting on the sofa, still awake, alert, and talking. But when I looked at her face, the brownish spots had changed to purplish blotches. I called 911 right away. When we got to the emergency room, they've started two um, IV meds, intravenous lines on both arms, and they were just gonna do a spinal tap. She encountered meningitis eight days before she was 16 years of age, and yet when meningitis hit, it was 13 hours from the time she experienced a sore throat the time she was pronounced dead. Blood infection symptoms may include reddish or brownish small bleeding spots or bruise-like appearance or purplish blotches. Towards the end, there may be a rash that can be described as red or pink. It can appear anywhere on the body. That's a very dangerous sign and you should seek medical care right away. I contracted meningeal cockle septicemia at age 12. At baseball practice, I had a really bad headache. Came home, uh, I was really light sensitive, really sound sensitive. So I had 105 fever. That night, had fever went down, woke up the next morning. I saw purple blotches and I suddenly remembered an article that was written about a daughter of a nurse who had passed away with his symptoms. My mom called the emergency room. I thought, what can I do to get him into triage fast? I said to the receptionist, we suspect meningitis, he has purple blotches, and I understand minutes count. And within a minute, she said, we have a very sick boy here. They did the spinal tap and put him on antibiotic. So I spent two days in the intensive care unit and five days in the hospital taking IV. Spent another week at Shriners Hospital for a skin graft to repair the damage that had been done to my knee from the septicemia. If my mom hadn't read the article in the newspaper, then probably would have had much worse damage done to me. Knowledge mattered. I contracted meningitis, uh, most likely from drinking out of someone else's water bottle. 